SpaceX is about to launch cosmonauts again. In the latest revelation from NASA, SpaceX will initiate the mission to send Crew-7 to the ISS. This will be the third time this year that SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft has taken astronauts to space. In contrast, Russia's Soyuz, once renowned as a workhorse in the launch industry, now cannot independently transport its astronauts to the station. What caused this failure to happen? Will Soyuz continue its missions or stop them altogether? Stay tuned as we dive into these questions and more in this episode of Alpha Tech. Throughout history, resupply missions to the ISS have relied on Russia's Soyuz, as integrated crews became the standard level for the ISS program. Every few months, a crew of two or three space travelers, representing different nationalities, would cram into a Russian Soyuz spacecraft and launch from the Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. However, times have changed, and it's a pity for the Russian space industry. Now, Russian astronauts must frequently use American-made spacecraft to get access to space. The only spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts currently belongs to NASA, namely the Crew Dragon that's manufactured by SpaceX. Currently, NASA and SpaceX are preparing for an upcoming crewed mission, Crew-7, and that's scheduled for August. It holds significance as it'll be the seventh operational astronaut mission that SpaceX does for NASA, and it'll be the company's 11th crewed flight overall. SpaceX has been a crucial partner in space missions, having conducted missions to the ISS and beyond, including the private Inspirational 4 flight to Earth orbit in September 2021, and the Axiom AX-1 and 2 missions to the station in April 2022 and May 2023, respectively. The mission includes four members from NASA, ESA, JAXA, and Roscosmos. Among them, the sole Russian representative, Borisov, will be making his first trip to space and serving as a mission specialist. His responsibility will involve monitoring the spacecraft during the dynamic launch and entry phases of flight. He joined the Roscosmos Cosmonaut Corps as a test cosmonaut candidate and had to wait for five years to have the opportunity to go to the ISS. Crew-7 will conduct new scientific research to prepare for human exploration beyond low Earth orbit and benefit humanity on Earth. Experiments will include the collection of microbial samples from the exterior of the space station, the first study of human response to different spaceflight durations, and an investigation of the physiological aspects of the astronaut's sleep. These are just a few of the more than 200 science experiments and technology demonstrations that will take place during the mission. While aboard the orbiting laboratory, Crew-7 will see the arrival of both the SpaceX Dragon and Roscosmos Progress Cargo spacecraft. Crew-7 is also expected to welcome the agency's Boeing Crew Flight Test astronauts, the Axiom Mission 3 crew, and the first cargo flight of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser during their expedition. Following them is the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft, scheduled to launch on September 15th. It'll carry Roscosmos cosmonauts Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chubb and NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara to the space station. This launch will be the first crewed Soyuz mission since Soyuz MS-22 in September of last year. The previous spacecraft experienced a coolant leak in December, prompting Roscosmos to replace it. An uncrewed Soyuz MS-23 was launched in February, and Soyuz MS-22 was brought back without a crew. This incident disrupted Russian ISS activities, compelling astronauts to suspend spacewalks as officials focused on the leak capsule, which serves as a lifeboat for the crew. The Roscosmos investigation concluded that there was no defect with the Soyuz spacecraft that caused the link, even though a Progress cargo spacecraft experienced a similar leak in February. There's no basis to ensure the safety of the next Soyuz journey, even though Joel Montalbo, NASA's ISS program manager, stated that he and Ken Bowersox, NASA's associate admin for space operations, met with Roscosmos officials in Moscow a week and a half earlier. He mentioned that there was no evidence of changes in procedures, tooling, or personnel that could have caused the Soyuz coolant to link. Today, the conclusion of Roscosmos is that some kind of external force, like a micrometeoroid or orbital debris impact, caused the link. The NASA team has also looked at it, independent of the Russian team, and we also can't find anything based on the information we've been given by our Russian colleagues of anything other than some type of external force or debris or something else like that. This further adds to the unpredictability of Soyuz, as the space environment is something that nobody can foresee, and dangers may arise at any time. If Roscosmos doesn't come up with a reasonable solution to address this leakage issue, the risks will continue to be present for their first flight of the year. Not only facing technical issues, the recent slowdown of the Soyuz program also has to deal with a scarcity of launch sites. 
For nearly seven decades, Baikonur has been synonymous with the Soviet and Russia space programs. The sprawling complex on the barren steppe of southern Kazakhstan has hurled hundreds of rockets and ballistic missiles into space, playing a part in some of history's greatest spaceflight achievements. The complex survived the Soviet collapse, endured the economic chaos of post-Soviet Russia, and then helped position the Russian space agency, now known as Roscosmos, as a leader in continued space exploration. The sun, however, has finally set on Baikonur, for Russia anyway. At issue is an arcane contract dispute between Roscosmos, which pays Kazakhstan around $115 million annually to lease the complex, and a Kazakh company that's partnering with Roscosmos to build a new multi-billion dollar launch facility called Zenit M. Kazakh authorities have seized the assets of Roscosmos' main operator at Baikonur, citing unpaid debts and are demanding $26 million. Bruce McClintock, former defense attaché at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow and a senior space policy researcher at Rand Corporation, a U.S.-based think tank, said, it's the latest symptom of Russia's continual decline as far as their status as a space power. However, it's not that Russia hasn't considered this scenario. As a major power, they still want to have their own launch site. That's why, in recent years, they shifted towards constructing a new launch site for most of their rockets in far eastern Russia at Vostochny. But Vostochny isn't without its challenges. Construction at Vistochny began in 2011. The project slid into a swamp of cost overruns and endemic corruption, with the costs now estimated at $7.6 billion in climbing. The first launch, a satellite, was delayed by one year until 2016. Completion, set for 2018, has been pushed back repeatedly. Of the 10 successful launches conducted to date, none have been manned. Meanwhile, dozens of people have been investigated for embezzlement and theft. Workers have gone on strike at least once due to unpaid wages. In 2021, Russia's top auditor revealed that inspectors uncovered $400 million in financial irregularities at this agency in 2020. For observers of the space program, many of the woes Roscosmos is dealing with are self-inflicted. Last year, just days before Roscosmos was set to launch the latest batch in scores of satellites for low-Earth internet provider OneWeb, Rogozhin made last-minute demands of OneWeb, including that the British government divest its stake. OneWeb refused, and Roscosmos seized the satellites, which it still hasn't returned. On the other hand, Dmitry Rogozhin, the former head of the Roscosmos agency, made alarming comments, such as suggesting that the man-made hole found in a Russian capsule was deliberately made by an American astronaut. This and other incidents, including allowing cosmonauts to pose with flags of separatist forces in Ukraine, drew criticism from NASA and other international partners. Days after that incident, he was pushed out of his job, replaced with a more technocratic former deputy prime minister. As a consequence of these actions and the invasion of Ukraine, Russia's lost its international market and faced funding challenges. The Russian space program experienced slipping quality controls and difficulties with an aging workforce. Additionally, they faced difficulties in obtaining computer chips, which further impacted their capabilities and reputation. The controversy and behavior exhibited by the Russian government have eroded trust in the Russian space program. Many countries have sought alternative providers, and Russia's effectively closed the door on itself as a reliable international launch source. The actions of Roscosmos and its former director have damaged the perception of Russia as a credible player in the global space industry. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us to make you better videos. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.